Trailblazer Reloaded, aka Leagues 4, is finally out. I've been itching to play and I'm excited to execute my plan to get Dragon Rank. I will build the strongest magic build possible so I can melt any obstacles that stand in my way to that rank. Disclaimer, I did follow a guy that Mazar made. He's one of the best league players ever, so it's like, why not? But at the same time, it's because he picked Kandarin as well as his first region. I'll explain why I picked Kandarin for my mage build. But yeah, it worked out really well, so I figure I follow it. And the link is in the description if you're in a similar starting position. Anyways, we are off to an amazing start as it only took me about 40 minutes of waiting for the server to respond to my login request. And yes, I did manage to get in. No biggie, it is time to play Leaks 4 and the first thing I do of course is to grab my own pet and metamorphosize it into the good old Mudadal classic doggo pet version to join me for the ride. Nani? But what is this? It seems that I cannot transmog my omelet. Jagex, you mean to tell me that you've never bothered to code leagues to remember if your pets acquire transmogs this whole freaking times after four leagues? Well, apparently they heard my complaint and they're now considering adding that option next league. Even though all of us assumed that was already the case. Anyways, rent is over. Let's get back to the real leagues for progress. So the guide helped me speed up the process of going from tier one relic to close to tier four relic. I'm not going to cover too many of those early tasks because you've probably seen them or already are doing them yourself. A lot of the new league enjoyers might be asking, why rush relic tiers instead of focusing more on your major goals? Like for me, going straight to race three and getting that shadow. Well, actually rushing tiers actually speeds up my ability to reach pretty much any of my endgame goals in leagues, in any leagues I've played. There are a few simple reasons for that. The specific relics that you unlock are insanely OP on their own and will definitely help you in so many aspects of progression. And the other reason is that every time you unlock a new tier, you also unlock a worldwide passive effect such as increased multiplier on XP, drop rates, even things like slayer points or mini game points. For example, going from tier 1 relic to tier 2 gives you instantly an extra 3 times XP multiplier, which means from the base 5x to 8x. No amount of rushing towards your goal will ever beat the time save of the tier passives and the relics. You will see how I take advantage of the relic tier passives to save insane amounts of time in this video. Also, the first tier to the fourth tier is quite fast to unlock as well, especially in this league. It is god tier efficient to just get those four done early. Anyways, I chose Trickster as my first relic because Trickster makes normally non-AFK skills like leaving even more AFK, or skills like fire making quicker to train. Agility, Hunter, fire making, and thieving, which tricks or effects are all fairly active skills, so being able to speed those up is amazing as I prefer the AFK skills more than actively doing them. Also, Trickster lets me make super reliable money early on in Kandarin, as Kandarin has many good thieving NPCs like Arty Knights, Paladins, and Heroes. Since I cannot fail them, it just auto-picks up to 84 times before I actually have to do anything, making it super relaxing and AFK. Every time I need to think about what I gotta do next, I'm just thieving on the side to never miss free GP and XP. I also love gaining agility, experience, just doing anything but actually training agility with the boots that you get from Trickster. You put it on, you move around, and you just get a bunch of XP that scales with your level. Even simple things like waiting for a Castle Wars game to end for a task is actually not wasteful because I can just run around while I'm waiting for the game to end and gain free agility XP. So as you've already heard, my first region is Kandarin. It's super good to just help me start off the build, but also later on, it's super good for the gear as well. We'll talk more about that when we get there. For now, it is just solid points to speed up my relative unlocks and good money to help breeze through the early game purchases like the runes and the early gear like Dran Skimitar. Shortly after, I reached tier 2 relic, which are the teleportation relics. For this tier, I chose Fairy's Flight because it allowed a completely new style of teleportation on top of the classics like Fairy Rings and Spirit Trees, all in one item. It also allowed for teleports to Leprechauns. Holy moly, that is so freaking cool. There are so many Leprechauns in RS based on the farming patches. 
So that adds so many new teleportation options. I was having so much fun just brainstorming how I could get to all the different farming patches to help me get somewhere else. Globetrotter had the same old teleports most of us are already used to in our house with like the jewelry box. So it didn't really feel too exciting. But in truth, both of them are incredibly good. So the difference between them in terms of overall use is probably very minimum. I just chose Globetrotter because it offered new types of teleports and that's it's so fun. I love new stuff in leaks. After doing a bunch of more standard tasks, I unlocked the tier 3 relic which gave the recall ore for free regardless of which specific relic in the tier that you chose. So last recall works like before. It just saves your teleport that you just used and then you can go back to the original spot with it. So the two relics in question was fire sale and banker notes. This one was an easy choice because I already found a super reliable and AFK moneymaker that cover all my expenses easily in a previous relic called trickster. So fire sale wasn't really needed at all because fire sale effectively just lets you buy anything without any cost. But there's only so much that I need to buy and yeah, trickster just gave me enough money anyways. If trickster didn't exist, I would have been tempted. Anchor's note though, it's just I think another tier of awesome because it minimizes the amount of banking you need for everything you do from skilling to bossing and even questing. It is so nice to be able to free up inventory space at will, especially random stuff I collected without having to go to a bank. Anchor's note is going to be super useful from the beginning all the way to the end of your league's experience because you got a note and no supplies while you're gathering supplies for skilling or just trying to give yourself unlimited supplies during combat situations like food. Fire sales generally would become way less useful as you progress further into the game and GP just naturally comes to you via higher level mobs or bosses. Once I got a bit closer to the tier 4 relic, I started deviating from Mazar's guy because at this point, the guy just told me to get 99 thieving and basically get tier 4 through that. But I didn't really want to spend uh, the approximate 2 hours just AFKing on stream. I wanted to get that 99 thieving for some editing and show later. Which is exactly what's happening behind the scenes right now. Anyways, I decided to just freestyle some easy tasks and standard tasks and got the 4th relic tier. The 4 tier passive came with insane bonus slayer points per task completed, so I definitely wanted to try out some slayer right then and there. And also, it makes skipping a lot easier because you have so many more points to use. There doesn't seem to be any guaranteed slayer task picking abilities in these leagues, so this passive is the closest thing to that. As for the relic choice in tier 4, there's really not much to say because the intention is to make the ultimate mage build in leagues 4, so that's why I gotta pick the mage relic also leaks 2 was the original trailblazer i already picked a range build and also leaks 3 melee was extra op compared to the other two so i was already experiencing disgusting melee all right boys here we go here we go sorcerer superior sorcerer yes confirm yes yes oh my god six slot room pouch oh dude i can do this and I still have two slots left. Let's put more runes in there, guys. Like, why the hell not? Uh, uh Earth runes? Yeah, let's, let's go all the way, man. Like, frick it. Oh, that's so crazy, dude. Look at that. Oh, my God. And then you can wear this spell book. Does this give any stats? Hopefully it does. Oh, it does. Yo, lit. Six accuracy. Nice. Yeah, not too useful yet until we unlock Ancients and like RCS and all that. I can't wait, dude. That's going to be sick. Magic. Oh, look at that. The animation is wild. And I splashed on the rat too. I didn't I didn't think I would be able to show you that. Yeah, there is definitely that weird thing going on. Oh, this is so cool. But once I got tier 4, things got a little tricky because I'm complete on my own now. And I needed to figure out how to approach getting the final stats that I need to attempt some raids 3. My mage is easy to train, but uh, melee, range, and prayer is going to be a different story. Melee was still pretty chill because at least I had a decent skin. But for range though, I only had like a Dorgish and crossbow. And prayer training is pretty bad. So I was basically trying to figure out if I should quest through those stats or just try to do it all through Slayer. But... After a bit of Slayer, I realized, yeah, it's just too slow if it's not maging it. So, in mage, I can't really train those stats. So, 
I decided I was going to rush for tier 5 because tier 5 passive is absolutely crazy. You go from, I believe, 8x XP rate to 12x XP rate. Absolutely insane. So 50% increase. Yo, there it is, guys. That should be desert done. Just hit, yeah, it's just hit multiple threes. Thank you. There you go. That should be task done. Yeah. There it is. New region unlocked, basically. So we're going to go ahead and select desert now. Too bad we can't really rush into desert because mainly I want to be there for TOA. So we do just need to get better stats. So we're going to work on that now. We're going to focus a bit more on that and we'll, we'll also get some points too. Maybe it's this guy I got to talk to. Oh, there it is. No, you ogre, bro. Stop, stop, stop. Dude, I've never bought Eye of Newts or anything from this NPC before in my life, but I need to. Uh, for some tasks in the Tower of Life, I gotta use Iron Newt. So, my region is literally restricted. So, this is pretty cool. It's the beauty of Trailblazer versions of League. You gotta, you get to experience some really interesting old ass content. Who the hell drop a mill in Fire Runes? Dang, my shooting star. That's freaking insane. Look at that. 80 points for that. Wow. Oh, I got it finally. Oh, wow. Top only gives you one. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's a glitch, man. Because I literally get double of everything. For some reason, the ham shirt doesn't get doubled. Weird shit. All right. There we go. Ooh, 2,000 range XP. Yeah. Yes. Now we can wear this Dorgashen crossbow. Yes. That'll be my uh, best in slot range for a little bit. We do need to try to get ourselves something better, though. I got it. Yes. Okay, we're out of here. There it is, the D-Skim. That surely is a task. Whoa, that's two tasks? Oh, there we go. We got some acorns already. Yeah, so that's how I'm going to be farming since my region <laughs> doesn't really have too many uh, farming going on. Until Zaya for farming guild. So we're going to just use the bird's nest from bird houses. Like, this trees. Just going to do trees and fruit runs. Fruit tree runs, I mean. That's my strength. Right, in the, the gnome regions, it's like fruits, trees, and trees. I don't know what the other forestry tasks are. I need to look. Oh. Holy shit. Oh, that is a task. Okay, sick. Yep, gotta do all the forestry tasks. While I cut some willows for burr houses. It's worth. Alright, casket. 100%. This is maximum steps. I've heard that, even though Jagex said they designed the clues to be completable, as in within your region... There's still a lot of steps that are like cross region that doesn't work. So, uh, yeah, we kind of got lucky, man. This was six steps and we still managed. Here we go. Okay, that's pretty good, actually. Uh, I mean, Runkai Shield, that's nice. I don't have a Runkai Shield. And also, we don't have um, Dehide yet as well. Wow, we just gained so many points. Oh my god. 40 left and uh, we get tier 5. Yes. So the 1,000 Hell's Arrow task that you do, don't just drop it. You can get a lot of value off of this. Just a bit of feathers. You buy these iron tips. You can buy a Catherby, the fletching shop. There we go. Now we can do some fletching stuff. Oh, already. Oh, wow. I've already unlocked the fifth tier. That is awesome. This is definitely a, a tougher one here because mainly just between Bloodthirsty and Treasure Seeker. Clue scrolls could be massive points in the long run. Because Dryon rank is 55k, so it's still a long ways to go. But Bloodthirsty significantly increases my chance of getting the MB Heart. And I really don't want to spend too much time trying to get it. MB Heart is super good for the Mage Bow, of course. It powers the Shadow and the Triant, things like that, outside of raids. Because raids already have overloads, but there's a ton of bosses outside of raids that having MB Heart would speed up their kills a lot. And it'd be super fun, so... I think we're going to have to go Bloodthirsty just because it, it makes Slayer a lot nicer. You get a better Slayer um, superior rate and you get this even stronger variant that gives you even more rolls at a chance for the Uh Yeah, we're just going to have to go for this. And also Expeditious Bracelets don't even lose charges so or uh, Slaughters if I want to extend. So this is great. I'm going to have to go for this one, boys. There we go. I'm firm on it.
All right, if I, get, if I see a 95 XP drop, then I win. Okay, surely that's like six, right? Yes, we did it. Let's go. So that means it's time to do the Ella Dennis quest for the prayer and the Shadow of the Storm for the range. Let's do it. Everything leading up to this point, I felt was rather standard for most veteran league players or even creators. But from this point onwards, I'd say this is definitely my style of gameplay and progression that a lot of you guys love. A bit of chaos and a bit of ingenuity to reach my own end game. Nice. All right, we're going to pick more and we put range. Holy shit. 120,000 range experience. Yes. Let's go. That's good. That's perfect. I can wear an MSB when I get it. And perfect. I have a Harku scroll. I have a Harku scroll. This could give me MSB. So I pray. I pray we get it. Because that would be the setup for starting out TOA. So. All right. Here we go. Let's do a spin. Badoodle. Magic shortbow. What the hell is that? It's not a magic shortbow, but uh. <laughs> Oh my days, bro. What is that? <laughs> Holy shit. I, I really want to get a rune crossbow then. To go with this Sarah D high shield. Zami bracers, dude. That's so good because I, I can't get barrels gloves. And black D high, of course. Basically best assault range until Missouri. Holy jeebus. Well, nice. I mean, it's not MSB, but uh, yeah, I definitely do need to do some more clue scrolls though, so. All right, hopefully next one's MSB, but I do like this reward. This is such a good range setup, though. Man, uh, uh, I really need the best range boost I can get, because, yeah, my, my range setup is the weakest link of all. Oh, there it is, 37 mining. Damn, 12x multiplier makes this so fast. Hey, right, let's go. We are ready to do this quest. Yes, yeah, we're going to end the day with 1,000 total. Crazy. Did we? Oh, yo, we did over a thousand. Oh my god. And 13 total. Nice. And the thieving and all that too. Magic. Okay. Yo, that's crazy. Look at that. 50 prayer. Oof. I can use all the protection prayers too. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, pray at the statue. That's a task. Oh, that is great. Now I can actually block everything and one take everything. Oh, use protect from melee. Is that what about this? What about this? What about this? So only thing that's left is the requirements for the rage three quests. So well, we're going to do that tomorrow. I got train and stuff and I need to get some more money. So we'll do some AFK thieving now. Oh, nice. Our first level 90. All right, we're about to hit 99 thieving. So I was still am editing right now the first video. So I decided to save these two hours from like, what, 80 thieving to like 99 or whatever. Actually, probably a lot faster because I'm already tier five. So it probably would have been like an hour and a half or something. Yeah, from 80 to 99. And there it is, my first ever 99. And for the spoils here, we've, we've gotten basically a mil GP. Uh, also, some nice runes, too, for Ancient Magics. Uh, so, I really don't think I need too much more money. Because I just need to buy, like, a Mystic Top. And, uh, yeah, just a bit of runes. And that's it. So, I think I'm going to stop doing Paladins. Uh, I'm just going to stop thieving for a bit. Because I'm going to AFK some combat stats. Because tomorrow, my plan is to try to get, like, at least 70 Magic. And at least... I want to say base 60s combat for like some normal race three but yeah we'll see what the ammonite crabs or whatever has in store for us uh, i'm gonna try to get us uh, elemental shield because i'm gonna use my secret spot to afk ammonite crabs i'm guessing it's just gonna be really crowded so i need a, a unique spot but yeah we're gonna just do some ammonite crab classic afking i suppose so this store sells bronze bars and i'm just gonna get a bunch right now because I need to train my smithing to 20 so I can make an uh, elemental shield. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and do that. I think 120, honestly, is probably enough. But, yeah. I think this is probably a good way to do it. Because I'm literally level 1 smithing. And a lot of the 
unlocks automatically completes the elements workshop so i can't get the xp from that for example so yeah we are effectively at the mercy of good old bronze bars but hey well i definitely overdid it but it, it was fine it's afk and very quick so i got to 34 uh, smithing ah there we go elemental shield made let's go all right let me go to my uh hopefully not so populated ammonite crop spot all right, well, I rounded up my combats to at least 60, so I think I'm going to actually do some FK Slayer. I have a Chaos Druid. No, what do you call those? Like, the stronger Druids that you can find in your Nell as a Slayer task, because I, I can't do the Wilderness version, so that's the only one I can do. But they're aggressive, though, so uh, it'd be pretty good to just mage them, I guess, and just get some Slayer XP. All right, so these guys are actually very aggressive. Look at that. I like barely did anything i barely even got close to it and it's already these guys are already like holy look at this holy shit these are actually kind of cool i've never gone them as a surtas before so damn this place is actually really really afk but um once you hit 75 though i guess they just don't attack you anymore but until then they're really nice i'm actually glad i got a task of this because i got to experience uh getting some decent herbs and some decent afk and some decent slayer xp we're gonna end today with hopefully about 70 range by the time I finish this video. And in the next progress video for Leaks 4, we're gonna be sending race 3. That's right, baby. It's gonna be a, a wild, fast ride. So hope you guys look forward to it. But yeah, if you guys are excited, give this video a like. That would motivate me a bit more. But I'm gonna do it anyways, regardless. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video very soon. Take care. Enjoy your leaks.